Do you think it's okay to cut foam core like this with a dull X-Acto blade? Do you think it's okay to tape your foam core or hot glue it and have the glue and the foam showing? If you answered yes to any one of those questions and you think this is acceptable, this video is not for you. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. When you're designing a product, sometimes you need to mock up stuff and make things, and foam core is a great material. It's cheap, readily accessible. I'm gonna show you some basic techniques for how to cut foam core correctly, how to glue it together, how to make some basic shapes and cuts. If you live outside the United States, it may not be called foam core, it may be called foam board, but it's all the same stuff. It's basically a thin sheet of foam sandwiched in between two pieces of paper or a thick cardboard. It gives you a strong structural piece. It's basically a composite. Foam core comes in a multitude of different colors, different thicknesses, and in Europe, it even comes in metric. Some of the tools that I use for cutting foam core is a good cutting mat, definitely a steel ruler, some very sharp blades, and you'll need lots of those, good X-Acto ones, some tape, uh, some white construction glue, like a PVA, like an Elmer's glue, uh, and hot glue, which I'm not crazy about. Let's start with something simple and make some basic cubes. Let me show you how I make them. First. Let's start with a basic cut. I make no more than two or three cuts. The first cut cuts through the top layer of the paper. The second and the third cut cut through the bottom layer of the paper. For this tutorial, we're gonna make some two inch cubes. Yeah, I know, inches. I don't do stuff in inches, but in this case, two inches was easy. Normally I do everything in metric. What we wanna do is just make basic two inch by two inch slabs of foam core. And I'm just sectioning everything up. I'm using a square to make sure that I get square edges and square corners. We don't want any of the foam actually showing. So we're gonna 45 every single edge of the six squares on the two inch by two inch pieces. That way, none of the foam will be showing. Pay close attention on how I make these cuts, and I'm using a very sharp X-Acto. I'm basically making one cut every time. That last cut, need a little bit more off the top to actually make it a 45 degrees. And you can only do that cut if you have a very sharp X-Acto blade. It's important to have a sharp X-Acto blade. You will need to practice a little bit to get those cuts to be a nice 45 degrees every time. You're gonna use some painter's tape and I put it on my shirt to make it not so sticky and we're gonna pre-assemble all of the pieces. This is gonna allow the tape to come off really easy afterwards and it's gonna allow the pieces to be assembled together correctly every time. In this case, I'm using some hot glue to glue all four sides together. I don't like hot glue, I think hot glue's for hacks. Hot glue's fast and easy but it's not pretty and you'll pull strings and it doesn't look good and it causes excess thickness of the part and it'll, glue will ooze out and you'll have to come back and trim it up. So you say, Eric, how can I take my game to the next level and really impress my clients? Well, glad you asked. Let me show you. You're going to repeat the procedure from the last cube. Slab up six slabs of foam core. 45 them all, put them all together with your tape, pre-assemble them. I'm using a ruler to make sure everything is nice and straight. And I'm gonna use some just white construction adhesive, just a little bit on each edge. When you use white glue like this, you're gonna dramatically increase your craftsmanship of your part. And that's important when you're a designer creating quality parts to showcase to your clients. The white glue takes a long time to dry. You see that I used 
uh, supports to make sure everything is square and straight. You'll also notice here I'm testing out the pieces to make them fit just perfect. I mark where they go. When I add my white glue, I'm adding it on the very inside of the 45 so as to minimize any glue that would possibly ooze out. And you say, hey, couldn't I make everything all out of one piece? You could, but you'll get soft corners on those edges that you fold over. Here I've made a black one and you can kind of see how the corners are soft. So this is what your cubes should look like in the end. They should be quality. The next video is going to be Foam Core Advanced Basics. We're going to take a look at making some cylinders, softer edges, chamfers, and some bevels. Do you think it's acceptable to make foam core corners this way? Do you think it's okay to leave cuts in your foam core on the edges like this? For goodness sakes, do you think it's okay to bend foam core without cutting it or scoring it first? Well, then this video is not for you. Foam core, advanced basics, how not to suck at it, and how to make it look like you know what you're doing. Tips and tricks. In the first video of this series, we took a look at how to make some basic cubes. If you haven't seen that video, go back, watch that before you check out this one. Here's some good basic tools that you'll definitely need for this. A good steel ruler, some very sharp blades, some white glue, a good cutting board, and of course, some foam core. As a designer, let's take a look at how you wanna approach making some of your models. Ultimately, you want good craftsmanship and good quality. In this instance, we're going to build a two inch tall diameter cylinder. I'm going to score my strip of foam core every five millimeters so that I can start to get a little bend in the piece. Let's start on the end caps. I'm going to make some two inch diameter end caps. And I'm also going to mark a half inch diameter smaller circle inside of that because I'm going to end up removing that material with a rabbit cut. We're going to take this end cap here and we're going to do something a little different. We're going to take it over to the belt sander to sand it round because uh, cutting circles without a laser uh, is difficult in foam core. We're going to remove about a quarter inch material around the edge of the end cap. I'm even going to scrape off the little bit of excess uh, that's attached uh, with the adhesive to the foam. Now back to uh, the vertical part, the big two inch strip that we cut uh, slits in before. I'm going to go to every single one of those slits and I'm going to make a little V groove, meaning I'm going to remove a little bit of material, probably about a millimeter of material from every single one of those grooves. What that's going to do is I'm going to allow me to bend the foam core in a tight enough radius around the end caps that we just made. So I use a little piece of tape um, once I get the part to the correct lengths and I angle the piece because it's round and I put a little piece of tape and I measure the diameter to make sure that the end cap fits correctly. It's all done by eye. You could measure it. I do use a little bit of hot glue here for the simple reason that the hot glue sets up quite quickly versus uh, Elmer's glue. Uh, again, here hot glue is pretty good when you're hacking this together as it allows you to contour the sides to the end cap. Another option here would be some five minute quick set epoxy. It does cause uh, the, uh, the hot glue to ooze out a little bit and I have to trim it off. Let's take a look at how we're gonna make some softer radiuses and fillets and some beveled edges. So this first one that I'm going to show you, we're going to basically make a, about a 45 degree V cut and simply bend the foam core to get a nice soft radius. Let's say you wanted to make a beveled edge. I'm going to make two V cuts and in between those two V cuts is going to be where our bevel is. So pretty straightforward, just like before, we're going to like soft radius on that bevel as well. If you're in a big hurry and you want to be a really big hack, 
you can basically just crush the foam core with a tool without doing anything. So I'm going to score this piece of foam right here with just a round dowel. That's going to crush the foam and give me a soft radius. It's not going to be really nice. It's going to be a little bit uneven, but it's super quick and uh, sometimes that's all the time you have or you don't even have an exacto with you and you need some way to bend that foam. If you need to make something a little bit more precision, uh, let's say a softer radius curve, uh, then you can make a series of these V-cuts. I'm making three of them here and that's going to give me a really nice soft radius. I take the two inch strip with all the different uh, edges and bevels that we have and I fold it up and uh, I have an overlapping piece and that's going to give us some exposed foam and we don't want that. So we're going to take a piece of white artist tape that very closely matches the finish on the foam core. You could spray paint this too if you needed to and we're just going to cut the tape uh, to match the edge and we're not going to have any exposed foam. All right, let's build the end cap for this bad boy. I squeeze in a little bit of hot glue, and as your mom would tell you, uh, of course, that melts the foam. So a better choice here would be uh, white glue. That would actually be a better choice. I'm gonna take a piece of material again uh, that matches the foam, and I'm gonna white glue some end caps onto this. And I'm gonna put a little weight on here and let that dry overnight or at least a few hours. Then I'm gonna come back with a brand new sharp X-Acto blade and I'm gonna trim everything off so that it matches the edges. And I'm gonna get a really nice end cap. That's some advanced basic uh, edges and foam core techniques. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. You call yourself a designer or a maker, and you're still cutting your foam core with a pair of scissors? <coughs> Come on, dude. You actually think this is how you make a compound surface with a piece of foam board? <coughs> Seriously? All right, let's get real here, folks. Foam core, pro techniques, compound surfaces out of foam board. In the first video, we took a look at how to make some basic cubes and learn how to cut foam core. In the second video, we took a look at how to make some radiuses, corners, and cylinders. If you haven't seen those videos, you need to go back and watch that one before you check this one out. Here's some good basic tools that you'll definitely need for this. A good steel ruler, some very sharp blades, some white glue, a good cutting board, and of course, some foam core. So as a designer, you want quality stuff and clearly that's not quality. Let me show you how you make some nice compound organic surfaces out of foam board. So for the purposes of the video, I'm going to make a simple grid square that I can lay a compound surface on top of. And so that's what the first part of this video is about, just creating and laying out this uh, grid uh, out of foam core. And I'm slotting the pieces together here. I'm using a little bit of white glue just to glue everything up. And the beauty of white glue here in this case is that it doesn't just set up instantly like uh, hot glue does it allows me to square everything up and make it nice and true and it gives me great strength so we're gonna take advantage of the properties of foam core we're gonna make an organic surface something that you could not do with a piece of paper because foam core is a um, composite material, meaning it has a paper on both sides of a flexible inside. We are going to score a grid pattern on each side of the foam core and allow the composite structure to become flexible. So we're going to lay out a one centimeter grid and score about halfway through the foam core on the first side of the foam board. We're going to flip the piece over and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side, but we're going to offset that grid by five millimeters. That's going to give us this beautiful, flexible surface that's going to give us our organic compound surface capability. 
I originally developed this technique for a NASCAR team that was looking for a way to patch up holes during a race. It would have been with a different type of material than foam core, but it was a composite. To lay on this structure, we're going to glue on the ends first because I want to, the edges to be nice and straight and then we're going to do the inside ribs. I know it's a little bit backwards and we're going to hold everything in place with rubber bands and this is what you're going to get in the end, a beautiful organic compound surface with foam core. And we didn't even use any hot glue. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on.